Hey, if you're smoking a turkey, Mark and I got some simple steps for you that's gonna turn out a beautiful bird just like this. What do you think, Mark? Man, I think that's a juicy bird on that board. It's got that beautiful golden color, nice crust on the outside, and it's easy. Let's get to cooking. First thing, you gotta buy a turkey. Big thing for me is to look for a bird that's in that 12 to 14 pound range. Simply because the white meat cooks at the same rate the dark meat. You're gonna get it even cooked all across the whole turkey. And if you think you're gonna need a large turkey, just cook multiple 12 to 14 pound ones. Stay away from those big 20 plus pound birds. Takes longer to cook and the meat's not near as good as that young turkey. When it comes to smoking the best turkey you've ever cooked, give yourself plenty of time. Like if I'm cooking on Thanksgiving, Mark, I'm buying that turkey a week or even further out and then getting in the refrigeration five to seven days before I want to cook it. Are you a brining man or are you just a run and gun? How do, what do you think on turkey? I'm always going to brine Me for, mul for multiple reasons because it's going to add a little flavor, a little moisture, but if it's a little frosty on the inside, go ahead and throw it in the brine. That salt's going to help thaw it. You're giving yourself time to thaw that turkey anyway in the refrigerator. Take advantage of that time and get some flavor in the bird. Now, a lot of times they, they come enhanced or what they call enhanced. And all that means is they pump them full of some to cost kind of you salt more. solution to charge you more money. But the turkey can take that flavor. It can take the brine. It can even take an injection on top of it. And that's what we're going to do today. Right. Gonna, we brine the turkey and I'm gonna inject it because I want maximum flavor. The easiest way that I've found to do it is I use one of my big meat bags. It's like an extra thick Ziploc bag. It'll hold a lot of meat. Take the bird out of its package, pull out the neck, pull out any of the little giblet pack that's in there, drop it down in the meat bag. You can use commercial brines. You can make your own. I've got one that I use the bird brine. I drop that down in a brining bucket to keep the bucket clean and then add your water. And what you want to do with that meat bag is it helps keep it submerged because you can squeeze out all that air and you can get the liquid really to cover the bird completely and put a lid on it, stick it in the refrigerator. You don't have to worry about spills. A lot of times, like I won't have room in the fridge because my wife's cooking desserts and bacon and everything else. So I got to find an alternate method. I'll use a cooler, same thing, in a meat bag. Just take that meat bag, twist it, put a zip tie on it. That way you hold it good and tight and I'll dump ice on it. As long as you keep it cold, you're good to go. You just want to make sure you're staying below that 43 right. degrees the whole time. You don't want bacteria to grow in it. Doesn't have to be in a refrigerator. You can do it in that cooler. And it keeps your wife happy that right. way. She's still got all her refrigerator space. So we brined this turkey for 48 hours and then I took it out of the brine. We want to get this turkey on a wire rack. I mean, this goes whether you brined it or you're just injecting or whether you're just cooking it straight out of the package. You want the skin dry so you can get that beautiful golden brown kind of crispy color on a smoked bird. Now I'm just going to take some paper towels and start rubbing the skin. The drier that I can get it, the better it's going to be. We want all that moisture off the skin. How are you going to inject this turkey? Show us what we're going to do. You just want to make sure you get good even coverage. If you inject one or two needles on this side, do the same to the other breast. Just spread out spread the injection out. throughout the whole bird. Correct. And you pumping that breast up. I mean, it's, look how big and swole it's getting, Mark. So you're even going down the legs, down the leg, into the thighs. In the thigh. Now what about the wings? Will you shoot the wings up too? Yeah, we'll do probably a half a needle in each one. They ain't gonna hold a whole lot. I'm not a fan of using stuffing inside my bird. I just like to use aromatics, herbs, maybe some citrus, some vegetables inside the cavity to take up that airspace. Now I don't like the wings all flipped out like this. I always like to take them rotate them back like he's putting his hands right behind his head and you just tuck it right under the bird. It lays there all nice like he's ready to get a suntan. And he gonna get one on his pellet grill today. Now we also want to tie these legs up because right now he's all splayed out. Even that stuff is trying to come out. We want to make it a tighter package and we want the thighs and the dark meat of the legs to cook at the same rate. We're just going to take our paper towel once again and wipe off any of that excess injection that we put on it. It's good and dry now. It's ready for the seasoning. So now we need to get a little oil on the outside. And I cheat here. I just use cooking spray. If you want to melt some butter and brush it on the outside, rub it down with oil, whatever you want, you need to get a fat on it. What's that fat going to do? It's going to help get that skin as crispy as possible. That's what's going to give us that beautiful golden color. It's also going to help our seasoning stick to it. You got it on this rack so it's easy to rotate around. Make it sure you get the whole skin covered. This is where it's completely up to you. Whatever you want to cook, I'm going for that golden, you know, think of Thanksgiving picture you've seen where they're bringing the big turkey out to the table and the bird's beautiful. That's what I want to do, so I'm not putting anything crazy on the outside. Salt, pepper, garlic, that's it. We've got it full of brine, it's got all that flavor on the inside. 
We injected it with flavor. Now we're just gonna season that crust. That's what's gonna make it pretty. I'm gonna pick the turkey up and I'm gonna turn it, kind of spin it as you season it because we wanna get the side seasoning too. To get the leg quarters and the edges of the breast there to get it really even, you really need somebody to pick it up. And I'm not going too heavy, just a light to medium coat. You just want good even coverage this season on outside this bird. So we are ready for the smoker now, Mark. Now, what pit cooks the best smoked turkey to you? As far as easiness and turns out a perfect bird every time, it's hard to beat a pellet grill when it comes I'm, to a turkey. I was hoping you would say that, because that's what we're gonna cook on today. We're gonna cook on our grill of silverback. I've got just that signature blend of pellets in there. I like some hardwood, also like a little fruit wood on a turkey. And I like running my turkey a little bit hotter. So I'm between 300 and 325 is that perfect temperature to cook a turkey, because it's gonna help it cook even. It's gonna get that skin right. Are we gonna get crispy skin? We're gonna see. We're gonna do everything we can to get it as crispy as possible because that's the way I like to eat. Right. Can you smoke a turkey on any pit? What if you don't oh, have yeah. a pellet grill? It's no problem. You can cook it on stick burner or drum. The key is to run a clean fire because just like chicken, a turkey doesn't take much smoke. It doesn't need it. Any pit will work for a turkey. Just try to keep those temperatures in that 300 to 325 range. You're gonna turn out a much better bird. Mark, let's put this one on the pit. Let's go. All we're gonna do is set that rack right in the center. We're gonna get the lid closed. We're gonna hold this pit at 300 degrees and we're gonna butter base this turkey to make that skin nice and golden as it cooks. Y'all keep watching. We've been cooking about one hour on this smoked turkey. It's not getting too dark or anything. That's what we want. What's the skin feel like, Mark? It's still super soft. I don't think we need to baste it or do anything to it no. yet. Maybe just rotate the rack. Looks good. We'll get some heat on that side and just keep rocking this turkey. The leg tie is doing a good job, Mark. Close the lid and just keep letting it roll. We're gonna put a probe in it next go. So all we're doing is rotating the turkey just so it's cooking even on all sides. We want the same amount of heat getting all over it. We're gonna hold our temp right there at 300 on the pellet grill. And about another hour, we're gonna come back, check on it again. That's when we'll start basting it. We'll put our probe in it so we can watch those internal temperatures come up and we'll probably be about two thirds of the way done in yeah. two hours. We're two hours in, now we're starting to get somewhere. Golden, delicious bird, smelling. I wish y'all could smell it. I just took a stick of butter and melted it, and this is what we're gonna baste it with. Now that skin's starting to get some feel to it. You could use oil, you could use cooking spray here, melted butter, whatever you want. We're not going super heavy. I'm just kind of letting it drizzle and just kind of run over it. That butter's just kind of easing its way down. I'm not brushing it. Put a little on the leg here, coat it up, the thigh back there. Then Mark, if you'll spin that dude around, now let's come with a little bit more butter on the top, let it drizzle down. Oh my goodness, it's gonna help that skin crisp up more. Mark, we're ready for a probe now. So when you probe it, you wanna go in the deepest part of the breast away from the bone, so we're just gonna go right in the front right there. We're gonna set it for 160 and watch it. That'll give us some carryover time. But where are we at, Mark? 130. We got a little just ways right. to go, about another hour probably, but we're not worried about time. We're worried about that internal temp in that breast. So we can just close the lid and let it rock. If you're having trouble with your turkey skin getting too dark because of the sugar in the rub or the heat's just a little too hot, just don't be afraid to foil it. Just take a piece of foil off the roll and drape it right across it. You're not gonna wrap it up tight. Three hours and we hit that 160 degree mark I was looking for in the breast. The reason why I take it to 160 is because it's gonna carry over. Now that we have this turkey done, and look at that beautiful color on it. Skin's nice and tight on it. That is a little crispy right there, Mark. We're gonna get it off the pit and let it rest 15, 20 minutes. That's gonna give us that carryover. We've already bumped up to 161. I don't want it to go past 165 because I want it to stay juicy. But Mark, up to this point, that's a pretty easy cook. Nothing to it. It took three hours to cook this turkey. It's gonna take 20 minutes. I wouldn't be scared to let it sit here 30 minutes. Man, that wing, it's calling my name because uh, it is golden brown. I know it's crispy. I want this leg right here, but we gotta give it, we gotta give it this market. I, I promise you, it's gonna be worth the wait. Look, we pulled that probe out. I'll tell you what, this joker is juicy. I'm having to do a little clean up aisle three right here. But sitting here, it is calmed down. We hit that 165 mark. We've been setting for about 20 minutes, but I can't take no more, y'all. Without further ado, we finna try this bird. I'm gonna take the breast off right here. I'm just gonna start midline, find that breastbone, and then you're gonna go right beside it, all the way down to the wishbone, and then start coming down. And once you get down to the bottom, right above that wing, you just kinda 
cut back. That's gonna let me take it off right here. Now we've got a whole breast sliced up. Now you wanna cut it across the breast. That's across the grain. You're gonna get better slices, even slices. Oh man. I'm gonna try that middle tenderloin part first. Yeah, it's wanting to jump off there anyway. Dude, that melts in your mouth. Holy smokes. Now I like cutting it like this also because you get that piece of skin right across the top. Skin bites right through. That's a perfect turkey. Good turkey, good turkey. Why do we wait once a year to, for Thanksgiving to eat turkey? I'm telling you. Mm. Mark, that is one delicious turkey right there, man. Thank you for coming back, hanging out with me at the Smokehouse. Anytime. I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all checking out this video. We gone.